there's a sense of pride of living in the community and knowing the work that the committee does. So I wanted to become involved from that standpoint. And then further, uh, attending this year's celebration last year. It's also another motivation when it was held right here at First Churches, Northampton, and, and that was really, um, that was another driving force to, to motivate me to become involved. I work for the development office, a uh, preparatory school, so some of the um, engagement and fundraising e exercises that we are working on with the Sojourner Truth Memorial yeah. Statue Committee uh, pertain directly to that work. And, and then when I was younger, again, going back to the sense of being from the community, living in Northampton, mm -hmm. um, coming up through the schools here in Northampton, having the opportunity, some curriculum that we did in the elementary schools um, had, I think, raise the awareness of both Sojourner Truth and social justice work um, in the Northampton area. The first scholarship wasn't awarded until 2005, but the, you know, the idea early on, I think as Reverend Bazian spoke about earlier today, is this idea of this conversation about racism, how to address, um, stop, and raise awareness um, on whether it's racist you know, activity, um, the, the group is motivated by what happens with the Rodney King and the LA riots. And from there, you know, it evolves more broadly into social justice, not just due you to know, racism, but other forms. Um, to give you examples, our, our scholarship applicants have written about anti-bullying um, initiatives they're involved in, um, poverty, um, the idea of access or lack thereof to education in communities. So you know, looking at racism, but also looking more broadly at other forms of inequities. I think of this year's scholarship recipients, one of our recipients focusing on um, you know, anti-bullying initiatives in her school and as well as broadly in the area. Um, mm -hmm. She'd set up a specific council at her school, but then been involved with other initiatives um, to, to really raise awareness amongst high school students about the negative impact of bullying and the need to really um, to address the matter, not take it lightly. And then uh, another one of our students had focused on um, education and had spent time abroad actually um, working with students uh, in um, Central America, I believe, focusing on um, you know, students who don't have access to education um, or educational resources really. Um, so those are two examples, but we have also had applicants and recipients you know, work on um, committees and, and initiatives to address racism in their school districts, um, to, adjust, uh, to address certain gender inequalities. Um, so it, it does cover, I think in the spirit of Sojourner Truth, you know, it covers a broader range and not just um, racism. I think the idea of our applicants being self-starters and really taking the initiative as students yeah. is, is what is what helps. Um, I mean, which stands out from all the applications. Really, we're in the process of expanding our outreach to Hamden County, um, and so we're working specifically with a school in Springfield right now to form a relationship um, to eventually be able to offer our grant, our scholarship to students from public schools in Hamden County, but other areas of Western Mass as well. So expansion is one of the goals of the committee to, to the immediate area. You know, expansion to all areas of Western Mass, I think is a broad goal that we're working on right now. Um, so that's with regard to the scholarships, but you know, again, this idea of educational enrichment, finding ways to um, have more students have access to the tours and the educational uh, pro programs and, and plays that this committee has been involved with over the past couple of years. Um, the Sojourner Truth Committee uh, partnered with Enchanted Circle Theater to produce the Sojourner Truth Play. It's an educational tool for students. So um, educational enrichment, again, on that broad scale. Uh, how do we raise awareness um, in the area of, of the legacy of Sojourner Truth? So we're doing the 20th year celebration sure. 10 years from now. I would like the, to see that um, we've expanded the educational um, profile of Sojourner Truth and social activism at all of the public schools in Western Mass. We do know that Sojourner Truth is now required part of the MCAS curriculum uh, from the state of Massachusetts. You could talk to students in Berkshire, Franklin, Hampshire, and Hamden County, and they, are, they know and they're aware and they're studying Sojourner Truth. Um, increasing um, the amount of the, the awards you know, that we can offer that will take some fundraising work, but it's a great cause. It's, not, it's, a, it's a fundraising which is, goes all towards good work and, and a noble cause. So I think that um, rate, increasing the amount of the annual award is another goal. Hopefully in 10 years you will see, um, rather than offering uh, two grants at $500 a piece, that we've increased that level.
the, the book is a collaborative effort. Uh, it was spearheaded by the editor, Reverend Peter Ives, and it's a compilation of all of the articles and newspaper um, recordings of the work of this committee from 1992 to the present. Now, the statue was erected in 2002, so there's 10 years of activity leading up to the actual installation of the statue. And I think what Reverend Ives likes to highlight is the idea that this was a this was not an easy go. This was not, well, let's come up with a statue and everyone agrees. I think that the book illustrates that there was debate. Um, so the story illustrates that debate, and then it also um, highlights the work, um, since the statue's been up, it highlights the good work that the committee has done um, in the community. So it's really showing this 20-year process of what began in 1992 and how it's transformed but stayed along the same path now in 2012.